Hi everybody, it's me Dimas, back in my on again but largely off again book review channel. Actually, the reason I'm making this video is because I just finished reading this really unique horror book, unique to me at least, titled Episode 13 by Craig DeLuey. I felt like I have never read a horror book written in this kind of format before, so I thought I'd just share it with anyone who might be interested in experiencing the uniqueness of it all, which I'm going to explain in a minute. So episode 13 tells us about the adventure of the crew members behind a ghost hunting reality show called Fate to Black. The crew consists of a husband and wife, Matt and Claire, who serve as the team's leaders, Jessica the understudy, Jake the cameraman, and Kevin the tech manager. As the title suggests, the book chronicles the team's effort to deliver their show's 13th episode, gearing up for the end of the season. As with many TV shows, the team and their producers want the show's first season to end with a bang to secure the show's renewal for the second season. This is why everybody gets very excited when they succeed in getting permission to shoot in this building called the Foundation House, which is infamous for its paranormal history. The building itself was built in 1920 and was famously used by a group of paranormal researchers to conduct weird experiments on human subjects. These researchers went missing while conducting their experiments in that building in 1972 and the house has stood empty since, but supernatural sightings have been constantly reported by the people who drive by or visit the property. Now, the Fate to Black team plans to spend 72 hours at the Foundation House to hopefully capture some paranormal activities using their cutting-edge technologies. Of course, this being a horror novel, one can guess that something will go wrong and that things will start getting spooky, which is of course what we expect in a story like this. However, what makes this book unique for me is the way that it's told and presented. It is written like a found footage horror movie like The Blair Witch Project, Paranormal Activity, Rack, Cloverfield, etc. Everybody is familiar with this kind of movies, where the audience is given the first-person point of view on everything that's going on through the camera lens of the cameraman, who under some unbelievable reason keeps recording everything even when their lives are inches from death. However, what makes this found footage subgenre fit perfectly into horror and why it's appealing to me is how it disconnects and removes us, the viewers, from the bigger picture, therefore trapping us in our own very limited perspective on things, making us feel disoriented, lost, small, and yes, terrified. The way the writer emulates found footage horror movies in written form is quite brilliant. It is written a little bit like a script with some stage directions, camera movements, and dialogue. However, it all flows effortlessly as if we are watching a movie because the narration is injected seamlessly. Now, while the book knows what makes found footage horror click, it also recognizes the genre's limitations. One of them is that we usually don't get enough backstory from the main characters since most found footage movies plunge us directly into the mayhem. But here, we are given the opportunity to see things not only from the cameraman's perspective but from other characters as well. We get to see the point of view of Matt, the lead investigator who, due to his paranormal encounter during his childhood, now is devoted to trying to communicate with ghosts and spirits to learn more about the afterlife. We also get the point of view of his wife Claire, who aspires to be a real scientist as opposed to just being the debunker of paranormal phenomena. Then there's the understudy, Jessica, an aspiring actress who views her ghost hunting job as a stepping stone to hopefully better acting gigs. There's also Kevin, a retired police officer who serves as the show's tech manager who wishes that the show fully embraced its nature as a paranormal investigation show without the meddling by science. And lastly, there's Jake, the cameraman who thinks he's just capturing silly people doing silly stuff in abandoned buildings. Now, every character's background, perspectives, and aspirations are peppered smoothly throughout their respective journal entries and field notes. It is a testament to the writer that each of the character's journals has a very distinct voice and actually sounds like real people with complex backgrounds, past experiences, and their own worldviews. So, it is thrilling and scary and somewhat heartbreaking to see their resolve, their spirit slowly dip 
as situations get progressively more dire at the foundation house. This is another thing that I like about the book in that the scares don't come from the supernatural sightings but stem from our concerns for these characters because by the time shit hits the fan, we have known these characters quite a bit and root for them to survive. The book has some excellently scary and suspenseful sequences and some claustrophobic moments during its third act, but what stood out for me is how thrilling and entertaining it is. It is the internal journey of the characters and the labyrinth-like mystery surrounding the foundation house that makes it a compulsively thrilling read. Just bear in mind though that this book is still plagued by the old found footage horror problem in that characters still find the time to record or in this case write a journal during what must have been a very dire situation. But by that time, I've already became very invested in their plight and it doesn't hurt the reading experience for me. So all in all, I'm giving this book, episode 13 by Craig DeLui, a 4.5 out of 5 stars. If you enjoy found footage horror movies like The Blair Witch Project, Section 9, and Gonjium Asylum, you might enjoy this as well. So that is my rambling review of episode 13 by Craig DeLui. If you've read it, let me know what you think of it in the comment section down below. I'm Dimas, until next time.